yeah, so Community Action Groups Oxfordshire. Um, I guess we're bringing a slightly different kind of organisation as we are, I guess, what you would call an infrastructure organisation, which is a really horrible dry word, I think. But we exist to support other organisations um, to exist. So I'm just going to go a little bit through about what we are to put into context about why we did this big 20 year celebration exhibition, which is what we got our funding for. So um, we are a network of over 100 community action groups. Um, we hit 100 at the end of last year, which was brilliant because that was when we were celebrating our 20 year anniversary. Um, so these 100 groups um, are groups um, all over Oxfordshire that are um, working on projects and events and taking action locally on all sorts of issues around waste, transport, food, energy, biodiversity and social justice and everything in between. Um, they're mostly volunteer led, but we're also working with a lot more groups that are now trading and are social enterprises and are, you know, becoming stronger and less reliant on grant funding, which is brilliant as well. Um, a little bit about the history of us. So, as I mentioned, we turned 20 last year. I haven't been there for the full 20 years, but I, someone has told me what ha happened in those last 20 years. Um, the idea actually came out of an organisation called Resource Futures, who were based in Bristol, um, and they were sort of doing projects locally, and it came to Oxfordshire. Um, apparently, it all kicked off with... a uh, um, a very forward thinking waste manager who took their waste trucks right into the middle of Oxford city centre, dumped all the waste there and got everyone talking about waste. And that's how community action groups started. And um, we actually got funded by Oxfordshire County Council and worked out there for the first 18 years um, under resource futures. Um, and they were our main funder. And then in 2018, we broke free and now we are our own community benefit society owned by our members and independent, but still funded by the council. But what it means that we can do is we can do, we can get funding for other projects that um, broaden our scope and our vision. And um, that's what we did. Um, so, this one I don't have to explain to you because this is what everyone is doing. <laughs> um, but just to put into context, uh, obviously our key messages is small action with big impact. So um, our friend Rob has done this quote, which gets shared a lot, but I really loved this illustration that went with it. I found on Instagram. Um, so yeah, it's all about obviously as coming together as communities, can have such a massive impact and you know in the face of the sort of doom and gloom of the climate crisis um taking a bit of action can be the what we need to kind of feel like we're doing something and to not fall into a pit of despair um how do we help these groups then um i would say first and foremost we are the cheerleaders um <laughs> People come to us, they have ideas, no matter how big or small, we sort of cheerlead them through it. And we we start off with conversations so to help people grow ideas. We offer support. We'll signpost them to whoever might be doing something similar or might be able to help or might have some money for them. We give money ourselves. We do really boring stuff like sort out their insurance and grant and give them grants to pay for their insurance. Um, connect peer to peers. Um, through collaborate groups and networking events and things like that and then we do newsletters and marketing to share what everyone's doing and to share resources and to shout about um, the network and to do more cheerleading. <laughs> um, so <laughs> then we thought wow we've made it to 20 years and what do you do when you reach a milestone you have a big celebration so that's what we got some transition seed funding for last year. Um, we worked with other funders and I'll, um, I've got a slide for that later on. Um, but we basically wanted to spend the year sort of looking back and looking forward with our network members and to kind of think of a different way that we could engage with them other than the kind of day-to-day -day support that we do, which can be a bit um, dry and boring. Um, so we, 
um, were inspired by Transition Network's um, project that they did in 2015 and decided to do something similar where we worked with artists and sort of built store, stories for everyone, for the groups in our members. We picked, well, we didn't pick, 20 groups um, came, came to us with ideas and, um, and we sort of developed this this group of people and we connected them with either storytellers we sort of worked with each group and decided what everyone wanted to do whether they wanted to do something visual or something around telling their stories and how that might look and everyone was matched with either a storyteller or a local artist and these artists were also learning from the groups because all the all the work that they produced they did in a sustainable way so um, that kind of cross sharing and cross learning was a really lovely part of it as well. Um, the aim of the project, I've probably done that already. <laughs> but what we wanted to do was to grow the community of people participating in climate action across Oxfordshire. So obviously use, use art and the different mediums to kind of reach new audiences and tell our stories in a different way and give us new ways of communicating. Um, working with our groups, some of the groups that came to be part of the project were groups that we didn't engage with, very, hadn't really engaged with, or they were new groups, or they were doing something different. So it was a brilliant opportunity to, to get to know our member groups a bit better and to be inspired and to use that learning around the whole of the network as well. And as I said, to be a big celebration of what we'd done in 20 years, which, um, you know, see at the back in 2001, there wasn't a huge amount of talk about climate crisis. And now every single district in Oxfordshire has declared a climate emergency and we have all these groups working on it. So a lot has happened and we wanted to, to learn and reflect on that as well. I'm sorry, I'm gonna to have to give you just a minute. To oh, okay, all right, I'll rattle on, I'll rattle through. So we, we did a massive exhibition. We did loads of stuff. We we spent six months planning it. We um we got artists. We matched them with groups. We did stories, and then we had this big exhibition. We had a launch event. We had workshops. We did a website. We then took the exhibition from the original location and went all around Oxfordshire to four different other locations, um, and it all happened in sort of August to November last year, um. These are the people that we worked with. We got funding from these people. We worked with hundreds of other people as well, from artists to designers, to caterers, to the library of things, to people with cargo bikes, to bubble bikes, uh, electric vans. We did it all sustainably as possible. Um, we had films made and it was just a really amazing thing. I just wanna talk a little bit about the legacy of it. Um, I just want to say all, all this time, obviously we were with COVID as well. So we, for some people, it was the very first time that they'd been to a public event or a public um, exhibition or anything. So that was brilliant. But I think that also affected the amount of people that would come out and see stuff. So we, obviously we talk about the great stuff, but we talk about the challenges. So um, probably more people could have come to it if it had been this time this year rather than last year. But on the plus side, um, we made loads of new friends and partners. We now have a really thriving climate arts network in Oxfordshire and all of the galleries are signed up to, a, to an arts charter. And so for that, that was a brilliant sort of outcome of that work. Um, and yeah, loads of other things. And that's me. <laughs>